to fedora.next.next. .next. Which is not a thing, by the way. This is not a thing, it's a joke. Yeah. Um, and let's, well, let's hope it doesn't turn into a joke. Uh, all right, so this is not a talk. This is a discussion. Uh, I expect that this is going to be a, an interactive session where you guys are going to do much more talking than I am. I really hope that is the case because my voice is starting to work. So what I would like to do here today is first uh, take some time and do a bit of a retrospective on the, this nice long Fedora 21 process that we've just been through. Uh, certainly, some things went very smoothly, some things did not uh, go smoothly at all. I'd like for us to take, a, to take some time and just call out what are the things that we could streamline, what are the things that we can, we can Acknowledge that we did wrong or did we do as, as well as we could and that we can improve upon when we get to Fedora 22. Uh, 22. That can be everything from planning to communication to talking uh, to uh, documentation to dealing with uh, to dealing with uh, negative press, to dealing with positive press that wasn't uh, that wasn't earned. <laughs> what what out there have you guys seen that was holding us back in 21? Fedora 20 DVDs and ISOs are really old and it also affects the testing of Anaconda because we didn't have a new Anaconda tested for a long time. So I'm not sure, uh, we know there was a long schedule, but I'm not sure what the Well, like if, if a user downloads a DVD, it's really old. There are really old packages, so maybe for the future something like respinning or doing new ISOs. If it takes a lot of time. What do you have degree spins? Okay. So I think not enough. We had QA and using QA and docs people show up in product working groups and um, feel disheartened by lack of response from other people. And I'm putting myself in a bad category here.
Yes, uh, so uh, what I said was that uh, uh, we've had the test composed, uh, uh, the, image, uh, the images that are supposed to uh, be produced for the, um, uh, for the uh, alpha testing. Uh, we've, we've had problems with those images, and I feel that um, uh, the right people have been involved in trying to resolve this issue. Uh, this is actually what caused the uh, Fedora 21 uh, three weeks sleep because we didn't have the, the image process working, and it actually still isn't resolved as far as I know. So we, we might very well end up with another sleep if this doesn't uh, get resolved. Yeah, it looks like three weeks already. Yeah. <laughs> Is uh, Dennis here? Dennis? No, but I just saw him. He said it's going to be next Tuesday before we get to TC if it comes early. So, for those uh, just coming to class, uh, what we're going through right now is we're trying to do a bit of a retrospective. What, uh, what, did, what did we not do with the mo in the most efficient way? So far. Um, so I'm trying, right now I'm just trying to gather a list and we'll, we'll start talking about uh, potential ways to uh, avert that door 22. Uh, and then we'll move on to, uh, to some crazy uh, airbrain schemes on what we can actually accomplish. So I hope I brought everybody back up to speed. Now, Adam, I'm sure you've got your own list, so let's hear it. <laughs> I think you got a lot of them over there. Uh, yeah. The biggest thing I had was I sent out the draft test plan for all of the work going on. It said, hey, we're going to do all these things and split up the responsibilities this way. And the little amount of feedback I got on it was, that sounds great, yeah, we'll do that. And then none of it actually happened, and I wound up writing all the test cases and release criteria and stuff. And I did plan. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, it all wound up being QA doing that. Hey, um, part, part of that may be kind of reflected in that I think the folks that you said, at least on the cloud board group that, that was sent to, it was sort of just thrown out like with, without much guidance for people who weren't used to writing test cases or, or doing that sort of thing. Yeah, so. that's, a fair, that's a fair point. Um, and it's kind of what, well, we've got to do bacon panels as well, so we can... I was going to say it's kind of water under the bridge at this point, but it's not entirely true because we still need to do Baker and Vinyl, so I can try and give a little more guidance for Baker and Vinyl and try and get some more going here. And for Cloud, Mike mostly handled Cloud, so I was dealing with um, desktop with Workstation and Server, so I don't know exactly what happened in the Cloud. Could we maybe get one of the QA folks to show up for the weekly Cloud meetings to... Is no one... Is Mike on? Mike has been Okay. okay. No, we have to try or, or to specifically do a sorry to do a session on that. He shows sorry. up every week. Was like, will somebody help me? So um. yeah, so yeah, we could I, we we could ask Mike to go along and give us sort of this is what we need and this is how to do it for sure. I can try to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
no, no commonality. Right, no solution. And that was slightly on purpose, because we wanted to let people experiment, right? Uh, maybe wrong direction. Well, in the end, no one did anything radically different. They all had a PRD in tech spec, but they just implemented the same thing. The same thing with the government. Basically, they all have the same government stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably way too heavy weight for the amount of really community members from the world. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else? Anything that really bothers you? I mean, I probably. I, I mean, we've kind of been dancing around it, but I think we should probably say it's gone on too long. It's you know, give me something or no, or don't. But I, I would say it's too long a cycle. some time to catch up, um, catch the breath, and work on tools so that we weren't constantly on the release uh, cancer wheel. Yeah, but um, yeah. if you're putting that negatively, I want to put that positively. Because well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not this, this, this is, well, I guess. Well, we were on the list of him because of time. Yeah. Pascatron is here. There was a good part of the list. Gloriously delayed. I think that the too long cycle is a problem in the sense that you've already got on there, we didn't get known 312 in any release. That's the biggest single thing that people complain about. In itself, I don't think it's been terrible. It's been mainly that one big consequence of it that's been really bad. I don't think anyone's been saying, oh, it's been a while since it's been a door release, this is a terrible, terrible thing. Well, except for less. Sorry? Except for less. Yeah, that was two months was too long. Yeah. Um, yeah, can you put Tastafron um, based on your production? Come 
Outside of the community is much better now. Like inform, informing other pe people about our actions and plans and stuff like that. It's somehow it's more related to Federal Magazine and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and, and that's true. With, with the sheer number of changes that have been going on, we've, had a, we, we've kind of been forced to do a lot more uh, public conversations, a lot more, uh, you know, just remind people hey, the door is still here. We're not, we're not fading away. We are trying something new. And I, I think, uh, you know, I have noticed that our, we've got a, I've gotten a sharp uptick in press, if nothing else. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> what else you got? Docker. Docker. <laughs>
be All convenient. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I hope that would be a little bit of a scary state for an Amstel, but uh, it's awesome. Because there's not a good press in over Vega ever, so so. As a longer example, I think I'll do it in the next I don't think it's more than a big one. More. It's not this strong, big changes to the way we Also the point that we are still on the bleeding edge. Hmm? Also the point that we are still on the bleeding edge. Like all new technologies are bleeding. Bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> so leading for positives and bleeding for negatives. <laughs> had some stumbling blocks on, on the way, but I think that in true Fedora fashion, we were also uh, much, more, uh, much more anxious to uh, express our complaints. But as I, as I look at the set of things we came up with, all of the, all of the issues we, we spotted are, to me, they seem like they're pretty 
easy, obvious solutions. Whereas all of the positives we came up with were things we probably never would have thought of. And many, and many of them uh, we never would have gotten to in a shorter cycle. So I'm <coughs> inclined to say that we were actually doing pretty well, all, all things considered. So let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, less obvious ones. Uh, let's see. Uh, so some of these are just some have a shorter cycle, but communication is, uh, that is always a classic problem. How, how exactly do we improve communication with product and non product leaders? How do we, you know, aside from what we've been doing, which is trying to socialize all of our changes as, well, as best we could, how do we, where did we fall short? I don't think we should be really standing to stay in the regular service reports. But that's also probably not efficient or effective enough for what we need. Yeah, that's 
maybe they'll go back and, you know, do this at least not to get to the wrong way. So, so a lot of the things that we work on in the working groups are not things that are represented by ranking the, uh, this, yeah, the package spec. Um, so it's hard to think about how that might be. Like, uh, like the communication for the QA documentation. Like that's not, there's nothing to branch there. Yeah. On the other hand, though, Could we make that process more streamlined? Probably. We need to throw some bodies at it, and I'm not entirely sure that it's a sufficient answer to the question. We have this, we have a big, we have a big target, and we'll be there, and then if uh, we have to go or take care of all the reviews and make sure they don't complete with the stuff that like this was built in the main raw head, and then you have to, to be back into it. But, um, right, and we're talking about what we do yeah. in this game. But what about OBS? Uh, do I agree with OBS? As far as I know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not a so good expert of, of OBS, but what, uh, what, what I know they do is that they, they, they branch, uh, or, or so they can also branch the space files and everything, and do all their changes in the branch, and then they, they, they merge the whole branch into, into factory, and it, it and, and it, it takes care of everything, and also OBS can do automatic reviews for dependencies, which Kodi doesn't do. So, uh, I mean, we it's want all the things that you can't depend on them for the development of the new schedule. Right, and, 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 and yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty of, there are plenty of cool ideas that OBS has, and we absolutely want to have in our tool, uh, tooling. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anything to that. And yeah, some, some of that stuff we can look at in the 22, 23, 24 time frame. Um, but yeah, as Eric said, it's very difficult to, uh, to do that without, without, without the tooling that we have by that time. So, yeah. Can we create a clear one? Do we want this badly enough that we would like the like if we're going to do a release long enough? <laughs> Longer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. Um, the question is that you say that all of these negatives are they're not big negatives, and given that you said that even the, the negatives... Unless they're not necessarily hard. They're, they're, they're not. They're, they're also, they're, 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 they're also positive size in that, for example, things which have relied on the release schedule, like the known releases, have actually found a new strength in the copyright. Should we take the chance to invest more in our tooling and release engineering by having a longer cycle <coughs> and focus more on both stacks and copper as solutions to the longer time for things that need to so the further my other response to this to this uh, subject is probably not. Uh, I think we need the task of some first and the game first because before we can meaningfully start talking about branding and I don't think that's quite appropriate for the problem to do. And I but think we should start a release as hostage to these kind of changes in the first place that I don't see why we would have to do a number of release cycle for that we can continue the releases where well, the same time. There, there is a problem in that we can't invest time in improving automation um, if you're constantly cycling releases and that investing in time in automation will give you better releases eventually but you have to have a gap to really do that or you don't have that much better automation. I, 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 I,
Yeah, the, neg the negatives are we haven't had a release in a while, and, and of course that means that there's relevance. We have old data, we have old stuff on the installed in the media. Uh, people get ang uh, people get anxious that, about what we're going to release. But at the same time, we have been able to take that extra time and use it effectively. Uh, I, Adam so, uh, uh, or Tim, on a, on a guess, <coughs> how long would it have taken to get Taskatron out if we didn't have this long cycle? This whole long cycle. And probably at least another six months, probably another year. Is it really because fair to be as far as full-time people uh, going forward? It's going to be two and a half full-time people, and we've had five for the last <coughs> six months or so. Is it really even fair to label those as negatives? I mean, that was we. I knew, wasn't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we knew that was going to happen. It's, it's not. I think negatives should be restricted to things that happen that were unexpected. And you know, we knew that it would be a while for release. That was part of the plan. I don't think negatives that are expected are, uh, are any less negatives. So. Uh, <laughs> but, and yes, we, we, we did go into it knowing that there, were, that there were some negatives. It's kind of like saying, you know, I'm hungry is a negative of going on a diet when you know that's <laughs> If somebody right. knows that, that's a session tomorrow. Are we planning for our company now? We did. Well, I was still inviting uh, comments on some of these. Uh, you know, how do we address? Yeah, you know, again, most of what we're what I'm seeing here is communication problems are the only really unpredicted. <laughs> well, what I what I mean is that uh, we had things that were held up due to communication issues that we did not uh, that we did not foresee that means. There were plenty of reasons that things could have been held up, but uh, lack of communication between the groups was an unforeseen So it's more based on our specs feeling there are not to keep the Good question. Uh, what's the answer? Uh, are, 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 are any of the base, the base uh, working group here? One. Okay. Do you feel directions? Do you feel like you, like the base group has a direction? And a uh, well, I think we have some things we are talking about and we are trying to get to the end of them. Uh, but um, the, the missing product is definitely um, the, the product's goal for other working groups. So we are going to the goal, but I don't think the base working group has such a goal. We are trying to minimize dependencies. We are looking into the base image, which could be something like product for the base working group, but it's still something different from the products uh, in its uh, real sense. So um, I'm seeing there are ideas, but there is not the common goal for these ideas. So there are really the projects which are where where is which are where are people working on them, where is the progress can be seen. So it's I think it's easier for, for environment and stakes than for base. Do you concur? Yeah, I, I really agree with that because uh, yeah, the, the missing product is something that well, can give us uh, one one simple goal. So they're not missing, they're baking. Sorry? They're not missing, they're still baking. Yeah. So, so we had we had a very um, very good time and we found what our task actually is. So uh, yeah, that was really 
it's still trying to run uh, I admit that it was the direction last time uh, I messed up. Uh, I agree with that. Um, but I guess uh, the things get started to move on um, slowly. And yeah, I think we have uh, some directions now, so I think it's getting better. Uh, I'm not sure what's the view of the opposite. Developing, so 
it would be good for us to, to know that, uh, yeah, our birthday was not necessarily will be on these days. At, at some time after vacation and all, there will be a little release. So we we would be able to plan our work for that year. The hard, the hard part about, about doing a time release like that, it seems to me, is having some real diligence about making sure every feature has a plan for if it doesn't make it. And, it doing, and using that instead of saying, well, what if we slip three months? We can't slip three months because that just doesn't yeah. work. It really never has at all. Uh, yeah. So we've got, to, we've got to be able to say, OK, one of the main reasons we would slip, and on those things, put boundary conditions on them so we know ahead of time that they're not going to work and skip them. So we probably want to get much closer to continuous integration tools that might be part before we come close to anyone. We can do it with manual reviews. I was an interesting thing I found yesterday, I looked at I got to the Fedora 9 test plan, which is like the error document of our entire QA process that we've extrapolated from this beginning to the last 12 releases. And one of the things they did there that we kind of lost along the way is they had somewhat plan testing for the features. And with Fedora 9, there were like six features that got tested, so it's a hell of a lot more manageable than what we have with like 30 changes per release. But especially for the, now we have the concept of system-wide changes, we could possibly look at integrating between Pestro and QA a process where we actually check in on the changes. And as Peter says, we say, if you're not there, then we're going to throw you out. If you're not where you said you were going to be in Alpha, and we all agreed you were going to be there in Alpha, we're throwing you out. I'm very in favor of that. Yeah. So that works I for change in, but we automated sufficiently to will be confident that this is not going to, to cost the execution. That release will be a lot of schedule. Yeah. yeah, that's an investment we need to make. <coughs> also, um, are these things going to occur? Well, thank you for that. Three meetings per cycle, alpha, beta, and viral, and we say, 
is it where the feature page said it was going to be? We don't need to get super, super in depth, I don't think. We can go through all the changes in the pre -made. Well, all the I mean, how many system wide changes are there? Easy to answer that question. Uh, 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty long set to go It's 39. I mean, system wide was meant to solve this by giving it a smaller set. <laughs> and then we've been pretty strict on getting things declared system wide, so we created the problem for ourselves, and then we now have 39 system wide changes. And there are things like Ruby on Bales 4.1, which is never going to break the install. So we probably are you sure if I was working on the horizon somehow? Not as we have or something. So system wide change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we need, to, so we need to fix that somehow. But ideally, I, I feel like there should be a way we can get down to a fairly small set of page changes that really need to be focused on in the view, which is what we tried to do and we got it wrong, so let's do it again and do it right. And then it would need to be less than, I'd say, a dozen. If it gets past a dozen, then that would be where it start panicking. So maybe we need some sort of, like, this is a real change that's going to be. Yeah, I mean, what well, system wide change is supposed to be? I don't think my question is a system wide change. System wide I wonder if something like the rel and bug process would help me. It's just per change of the bug. You put it modified because you feel it's way more. That's essentially what happens after the change process. The change pages are accepted. They get tracked in the book. They're supposed to be maintained. If it's not. So, well, so, so the meeting basically would just say, well, how yeah. all the bugs in the right state and what's with the problem? We can go through the tracking bugs in the meeting. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a meeting. I mean, we find meeting to work as well. You can do this all by the bug. It's just there has to be a process. The meetings go through like it's really do work well to set all the sarcasm aside. I don't think it really needs to happen. Yes. I would also add the better automated test coverage. And especially, for example, in the workstation working group, I think it would be really useful if we settled up on some GUI testing framework. Because at least there I know about at least four separate attempts and efforts to develop something and use something that could be used for GUI testing. And any time, I think all those efforts somehow crashed on something like, OK, this doesn't work in Doctail. This doesn't work in this uh, open SUSE thing, and uh, so maybe we should set up on something that we that we would really make useful and make everybody, or at least everybody in the workstation working group, use so that it is supported and really feature feature proof. Tim, is that something that Caspertron can? In theory, you could do. Um, I may argue with you as far as how far that should go. It depends on the details of what you want to do with GUI testing. Um, but that may be out of scope for this particular. Well, I think that it's, 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 it's probably certainly possible to do something like that. But the, the automated tested, testing of GUI is basically, I think, the most the the most pain for us. And so, and I also. Maybe maybe a nice point would be better communication between QA and developers, because I don't know. Do do you guys from QA know that we already have some Doctail automated tests for Anaconda? Yeah. We are working on the same, and I think there are two groups of people working on basically the same, not knowing what the other group does. No, I don't so. think we are. No, no we're, we're not. not. There might be other people on QA, but we're not doing no, anything. Right. So, so we're working on task is not what's happening in Anaconda. Okay. So, Oh, but that's great. Uh, so in GNOME, uh, in upstream, we have uh, several key packages using the Doctail framework, and um, uh, we have tests for those packages, and um, they are installed with the uh, make install step. So that uh, and they are also packaged up in uh, RPMs so in a different sub package for example. So, so this is actually something that the customer could use and uh, run after each build. Because the tests are already available. Would be oh, a nice one. Mm -hmm. They never have.
package phrase go to the next 21 row? Last I checked. Or was that fixed? I'm sorry, no. there's some, there's some, some packages have sub packages <coughs> for tests in them. We haven't done that for all tests because there was no, no user for them yet. Okay. But we should talk about that. Okay, well, yeah, because I remember looking, if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, that was, yeah, only package for F21. The reason they didn't start doing it in past accounts was all our clients have to do it. So, yeah. detail, detail. Yeah. Um, one of the things that would be, I think, good for us to plan for in general is somewhere, one, once, or, so right now in task response, the first deployment, the QA people have to make the tests, but coming in, Tim, Tim, what phase is people get to make their own tests? Is that going to be something that will be ready for um, the R22 time frame? That is the plan. So that is the plan. There will be somewhere where you can put tests for your package, and you put tests for other people's packages that will automatically be run on certain conditions. So we should have a plan for that to happen a lot um, and start building that up, and hopefully exponential growth of tests, because that will be have exponentially good results. <laughs> so Matt and I kind of talked about this for F21 as well, but maybe for F22 it would be good to kind of get an early start on the marketing plan um, and to talk about the big picture about where each of the products is going to go. Pretty good 
So the last last time, I mean, we didn't do ex as extensive a marketing as we should probably do for 21 and 22. Um, but I remember last time reaching out to different owners of major changes for help clarifying things, and people were, I don't recall anybody not being responsive. And if people have stuck with the working groups this long and have been in, I'm, I, I'm hoping that at least one or two people on each working group can be. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm more worried about can you deliver me like an article about something that I'm completely not a, a subject matter expert on? So for something really interesting in the server working group, me or, or Chris, well, Chris is a pretty smart guy, but me sitting down trying to write about a feature I don't understand is where I get, get a little hairier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can find something in the server A big question that needs to be asked is, what are the goals of marketing? What are you trying to accomplish with marketing? And how do you intend to accomplish that? Just throwing a bunch of stuff over the wall to the marketing group and telling them to do miracles does not have a notably successful track record. That's what we do with all the other groups. I don't know why. What's that? That's what we do with all the other groups. Do miracles, please. So the, to spin off of that comment, the, the flip side of goals and when we initially started that conversation a couple of weeks ago, I, I tried to suggest some specific metrics, but generally speaking, I don't know how that we have a good way to track. If we are wildly successful, how are we going to know that you know we've got or tripled or quadrupled downloads, for example? Do we have a good way to, to measure that? We have an okay way to measure downloads, but um, no, we, are, we do not have very good metrics on anything. This is one that's called one inch complex. Uh, anybody who wants to figure out some way to produce consistent metrics on basically anything in the Fedora universe, uh, please start doing that. I mean, we have good metrics on the magazine. Yeah. Because we can count the pages. And that's going to be a piece of it, too. Right? I fully hope that uh, immediately following the first one on the lease in the next couple of weeks, I expect, uh, uh, you know, especially with a blitz of. Uh, to see a lot of people go to find out, hey, what, what, what exactly did they just release? And yeah. where can I find out more about this? Because that sounds interesting. Uh, I'd, I'd actually love to see, uh, you know, after Fedora 21 release, I'd love to have us uh, do a public uh, release of the metrics on which pages were hit. Uh, you know, just, you know, people looked at the, uh, at the release announcement and then lots and lots of people looked at the workstation announcement, a bunch of people looked at the, uh, the cloud announcement, Zero hits on the server. You know, I'd like to have that information because, it, and that can also feed back into well, how do we market those things so that they're more interesting if they don't get hits? Maybe we have some room in the schedule somewhere to slip in a marketing pack us before the end of the week. Probably. Yeah, that's that to walk to walk in after Maybe some better presentation or some simple presentation of how much work has been done in the release because I think we do really a lot of a lot of work, but there is no like statistics or that it, something that would be really easy to understand for ordinary people to see that we did an awful lot of work. Maybe we could have everybody submit a video of themselves with the baggy eyes. Finished. <laughs> 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 yeah, it would, it would work for me. Speaking of videos, we have that idea. Right, right. I actually, um, right. <laughs> um, I had well, I had an interesting idea for the Fedora 21 release. Uh, I was going to have I was going to ask for essentially kind of a crowd uh, a crowdsourced uh, commercial. Just ask anybody that's been involved. Just send you know. 10, uh, you know, 10 to 15 seconds of you telling us saying something that uh, something that you think is really cool about 21. Have uh, have our, uh, our videos team stitch it together into something that uh, into something that we can actually throw out as part of part of our release celebration. Uh, so I was uh, I was going to throw this up on the list and see what the general response was, but you know, obviously, if you don't want to participate, don't send a video. But I think. Uh, you know, 
be nice, uh, especially if we, you know, depending on how many of these we get, it'd be nice to show just how many people have worked long hours accomplishing this. Under a silence. Okay. On the topic of fixing the, the definition of system wide change, when we came up with that concept and fleshed it out, what, what distinguished system wide versus not system wide was we were, if I had Lawrence, and we were in a very angry room. <laughs> um, and the basic definition wasn't put together in terms of having the product, because that really wasn't something we'd come to yet. What we, what we did was try to determine whether or not a change would cause other developers working on Fedora to not be able to do their jobs if you land it and it busted, right? And that was our big determinator, and I think it still is. And probably that's too strict, because that's probably things like GHC as a, as a system-wide change when you know, the people who are using GHC are the people whose workflow or who, are, who would be presumably committing a broken change, right? It's not popular. How did that get to system wide change? I guess it's like a, there's like a series of things it that are it's 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 like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. feature that are actually in their yeah. own little portion. One of them is updated the images for cloud. This is on the consuming side of all these, not on the client side. So some of those things really don't need to be, but but I think people are I think some of those were actually how much work they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but I think it's so, a, it, I think so it's a, an effect of the old feature process where so, in order to be collateral in marketing, you have to go through the feature process. I, I know what that one is there specific. And one of the reasons we made these these system wide changes is not just when they were um, would they were going to break other people, but when they would need significant work from other people. And that one is their system-wide changes because um, it's a lot of work across the project from release engineering and QA. Uh, huh. So maybe that's, because um, well, it's supposed to be a communication mechanism as yeah. well, so maybe there's some other. So maybe we need be a different mechanism to determine what we're trying to determine now. Yeah. Or, just be more aggressive about relabeling that might be useful to cell phone maybe if they have to use cell phone Or perhaps not ask them to volunteer that information and just let Pesco make the decision. Well, I don't know. There really is an area of typical language ecosystems where there are people affected outside of the term maintainers, but it's not the, the whole community. And it's something that we probably don't want to Related project for. And it's also a place where might be wrong expertise. Yeah. Well, in this case with this particular example, it's not something we've doing the project for. The contingency plan is, oh, I guess we don't have that. We yeah. have a great contingency plan, and more product, more things could have that plan than uh, excellent because we can keep delaying them. Well no, this 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 works only if uh, either nothing is going to be or if we yes. we brand it. This particular thing is something that so an external process that can be yeah, so that omitted. <laughs> Great, more often we can probably all out of these these pages. Yeah. So I guess I had a so sort of question or an idea. I don't know. So I mean with these slight changes where basically the idea is to avoid your being broken. That's sort of the end. You don't want to be in a broken state. I'm just I'm wondering if we really have enough tracking of when an idea of a bulk considered to be a broken state back in the tracking is. We have to obviously do that once we get to the output and data and so on and so on. But it seems to me that sometimes. And part of this was kicked out of the fact that uh, it was proceeding, it was six months that proceeded by Tom Lawrence. We had had, what, no fewer than five like, uh, like system breaking uh, updates going. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm saying there's some sense that if, you know, if, if you know, poses aren't working or anaconda's not working, whatever. Even if we're in raw, I haven't gotten an healthy yet. We're really in a broken state, and in some sense that should be red flag and that we should be scrambling or making that a priority. And I don't know if we need any, either, there'll have to be some sort of process or web page you can go to, which is, is or, or what 
Yeah, it's not just well, it's not just about yeah. Do you want to just more like home more more of the English integration? Yeah, no, I actually have it. So clearly it would not get English integration automatically triggering it. That's the best. Yeah, right. That's sometimes but sometimes this is something that we're we can determine it manually as well. Right, but but a large I think more of the driving factor here is you know it is being able to coordinate when something lands so that it's yeah, well, but if, if we have some idea of what we broke in this stuff, you can tell people, okay, don't land this if, if some major part of the door is going to be broken. Well, oh, that's yeah. Yeah, so that's what right. The yeah. problem is yeah. with somebody saying, oh, I just put an SOD on the property today to ride an hour ago. Not cool. The problem is with solving was not accidental breakage, it was solving breakage that was expected by some people and they thought everybody knew. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that didn't happen, but you know, the, everything is broken and nobody expected it. Case is yet another one that we don't. I don't think about that stuff breaks. Yeah, yeah. that's that's why we said more stuff like task gating. Yeah, automatic gating, and you know, I think basically adding the feature creepy process thing to the go so we need. So uh, one thing I would like to see currently in Fedora 21, which is a little bit too late, but mm -hmm. right, 22. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that uh, when we crashed, we didn't automatically uh, enable reporting, and uh, and uh, that means uh, I I'm working with GNOME software, and uh, I cannot uh, I cannot uh, test some stuff, like for example, Body uh, Body uh, has uh, the package update description. And uh, you know, software is supposed to uh, show that description. But there's no way to test the good path that right now because it's just not enabled. <coughs> uh, but the same thing with signing. Yeah. Since what is really being enabled, signing isn't, uh, isn't actually working. And we can't test it. It's a basic. And when you have to pick the software for the latest release, then you can test it. I mean, uh, I think it's, it's not a good idea to enable body so early. It's already enabled too early. It's a lot of work to get stuff into something that is not even released yet. I think we should actually enable body later than we do. We used to enable it only as the data rather than ever. What he's saying is you can't actually perform uh, <coughs> updates because they're not like the prior to body being enabled. There is, no, yeah, yeah, but so there is no way to get that information. It will be this new version of no software for Fedora 20 or even 19, and then we can test the update there. Uh, I mean, if, if we are talking about testing the GNOME software and alone, that is surely something that can be done in with, with an offline test on the report. And if we are talking about integration just with the whole distribution, then I don't know. Are we expecting long-term breakage so that we will be able to start using body just to have the buffer to it? Is there a lack of scientific problem or just the lack of thinking updates? Uh, yes, both actually. Because there's a plan in the science. Um, is there a compromise we can make there where we make it a halfway, uh, like where you say you can halfway enable body and you don't have to use it, but if you want to create a couple of updates, you can? Yeah, if you want to put it in the code, go ahead and no one's going to yeah, stop you. Yeah, exactly. That's our right now, you can't. That doesn't seem that difficult. It was Luke. Or just automatically, <laughs> just automatically add his body with it. Was that clear enough? Or just one day? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, yeah, so there's an idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And uh, another thing that I had something a little early is that we actually branch branch the door of Mint One really early. Well, yeah, well, it wasn't planning to be. Now it's just a yeah, delay. Yeah. So that and, um, and uh, I'm thinking that may maybe it would make more sense to uh, to actually, you know, the door of Mint One branch to release on the raw pipe branch some more time, so so that the uh, Right now we have the stuff is already meant on raw pipe. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's what we are at the front. That's what we are at the front too. So right now we have our tester community split between two releases, and also the developer community. To me, it would make sense to to focus on one thing to actually make the next upcoming release stable and stop the development on raw pipe for a while. To, we used to do that. And yeah, I think the new one is already better than the old system. No, no frozen raw hay was specifically a feature to 
not do what you just described here. We should do because we hated it when we did that. And then it's overall been an improvement of the branch. And we wrapped right early and we split. And that wasn't that long ago. Can someone summarize the advantages that more eloquently than me? So the problem when we just developed the next release on the development branch was um, you had this conflict between people who still wanted to do development on the development branch and the people who wanted to stabilize the release on the development branch. So QA and Relent, we wanted to freeze it for you know two, three weeks at a time. We wanted to take only critical changes. And all the way from beta to final, we wanted to take only stabilization changes. But people wanted to do development work in that time. And they would try and land it, and we would say no, and there would be big arguments about what we should be doing. And branching allows you to say, OK, you want to do development work, you can go and do an endless one, which is completely outdated. You can do development in there, it's great, go do it. And we can actually stabilize the upcoming release in the branch crash. That's the point of the system. And as somebody running Rawhide on my desktop, what also happened is then as soon as Rawhide became unfrozen again, it was broken. Right. Yeah, so it was it was a guaranteed broken raw hide for weeks. For weeks. Yes, 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 for weeks. So, so no X for weeks. Right. The, the reason why raw hide was broken back then was that was the was because raw hide still exists existed in the same way but it was frozen. But uh, but there were no composers. There was a Koji repository that actually caught bits and bits and bits. Yeah. But no way it existed because composers didn't happen. That's the frozen part. Yeah. So um, maybe that could be made. Yeah, but draw it being broken right after the branch is also a very common event with the no frozen draw it system. It, it's, it's I mean, I don't know whether it's currently happening with this time, but in, in the previous branching, they uh, order shortly after branching draw it was immediately broken by, by the by the order changes that were waiting for the branching to happen. So just sure. time the opposite had a catch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we broke 21 and 22. time the opposite had. <laughs> See, that's why I stay on the right. Branch was broken and all that at the time. Yeah. Okay. There were things we could improve on the recurrent system. We could make it, we could make the branch point much less painful. Because <laughs> right now you kind of have to know exactly what's going on. You need to know all the inside baseball if you're someone who's running the next release. Because the branch point happens and you have to know whether you want to be a raw idle branch and how to do that which is kind of messy. Um, we can tweak the branching point, whether it's at the absolute optimal time right now or not, is something we can play with. But I don't think it would be a good idea to go back to one that branch. I have to write this email which says you have to do yum install foobar and then disable these repositories and then do yum distro sync, because it's kind of silly. So that's, that's the sort of thing we could work on in that area for sure. Didn't it used to be you would go into a branch instead of, I think possibly, but I can't remember for absolutely sure. I feel like it changed what happened. Yeah. That also only works if you, uh, it is an, can only possibly work if you update in the right window. If you miss the window, then you just continue on raw. Right. right. I think it may have changed when we introduced Fedora Repo to Rawhide. Because that kind of changed yeah. that whole nexus, and I think it might have broken with that one. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay. But I'll pop out of the way and make sure it be a step in my detail. So, one thing we could do for 22 is to make sure that everybody in the world is going to be able to do this. Every world is going to be able to do this. Well, that's Dennis is sitting there feeling a little like he's the one guy who's sort of 
trying to get 21 alpha gun and running around trying to get other people to care about it and he's on a daily so basis i have said to, for the last three weeks i have gone to dennis and every morning and said right. dennis what can i do to help right yeah but the answer is unfortunately usually a dozen nothing. more people <laughs> sorry the answer is unfortunately i think i'm the only one who can deal with this right now sure. well I mean, right now they're they have this kind of sticky problem that they've been dealing with for a while and it's mainly dennis and brian looking at it and it just feels like I, I'd like to say it's kind of a medium based view, it's kind of a very vague view, but yeah, I don't know if everything I think that outside of Dennis, you are the only person who knows what's going on now. <laughs> so, um, okay, so maybe that's two way communication thing, but yeah. You can uh, force this to point is, is that <laughs> this is not the time where you can come. This yeah. is mythical man on territory. Yeah, it, I think that is definitely how it feels from Dennis. Well, I'm, I, I was thinking. Your head's down busy, but you need access to something. Let me go, let me go dig them up and bang the banks and heads together until they do it. I mean, you could have, there has been stuff that could be distributed. I mean, right now, the bug that we're walking on right now is this weird thing where the workstation images sometimes fail to compose because of a file system issue. And it seems like what's happening is somehow libraries getting held open after package installation, and we need to find out what's doing that. And that's something that people could look at. That's not really oh, yeah. special. Also, the cloud image is failing. Oh, yeah, cloud image every time. Time. We have Infinite. another thing where um, we have a problem with image names. And so uh, we kind of hack together a new policy for naming the images, but that needs implementing. There's all these little things that, and yeah, maybe Dennis needs to communicate a bit better about that. We need to communicate a bit better about that. But it was, there's, there's stuff that could be. <coughs> so, yeah, maybe we could just kind of force it a little more. <laughs> but yeah, um, once the composers are done, that really should be a race focus. Yeah, we need to get the pieces flowing. We have, we have something to look at. It's just getting over that hurdle of getting the PCs. Well, it'll probably be easy to read by the time it's actually released. <laughs> TC1 and TC2 sort of quasi exist, but not really. Go to five. Yeah, let's just bump it. We've got lots of numbers, we're not running out. Okay, um, is there a vote for something? Yeah, let's hey, see. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Uh, I, uh, we do appreciate it. And, uh, we will file away everything that has been said and act on some of it. Um, thank you again. Uh, seeing most of you, I hope, at the vote.